it's 5:31 in the evening so good evening guys today i'll be sharing one of my projects which has been prepared by me in vivi.net as a technology called scheduling scheduling is one of the topic of the operating system and uh, i was very keen interested on this topic so i decided to build a simulator so let's start with understanding what the simul uh, what the scheduling is all about before starting off as you can see there is a form which has been created in order to implement the scheduling Uh, so let's just give us a brief introduction about what are the components which are present inside this form. Uh, a form has got nothing but few buttons. As you can see right here, there are four buttons. Actually, six buttons. Two of them are right over here. There is one combo box, and there is a text box. So when I click on this combo box, it states me or asks me which of the scheduling would you like to perform. So right now, first let's start implementing with SJF, which is shortest job first. So I'll be selecting SJF first. These two buttons, plus and confirm, is actually to add process to our simulation. The confirm button confirms the created process. So without wasting any time, let's start doing the scheduling. And later on, we'll be understanding what is actually happening inside the scheduling stuff. Uh, so. There is a process called P1, which is the ID of that process. The 0.0 is actually the arrival time, so by default, the initial process will be given a zero as an arrival time. The burst time is being manually added by the user. So right now, I am the user, so I am adding a burst time of around three seconds. Then I am confirming this process, and then I am starting my scheduling. Within this mist, uh, the process has already started its execution, and between, I would like to add some more process. Let's say call two and process three, which has got its respective CPU burst, which is being inputted by me. As you can see, they both have already been uh, added, and you can see the P3 has already started scheduling. So you can add some more like this to 1.2, and then click on the confirm button. So likewise, you can add. Hundreds and hundreds of process right here, uh, and the list will go on. So, this is actually the implementation of particular SJF. As you can see, the P4 and P5 got almost submitted at the same time, but due to the P5's burst time, which is less as compared to P4, got executed first. As you can see, so this was not actually the motto behind creating this simulator. The main motto behind creating this simulator is to help others to understand what is actually happening as a scheduling uh, what the scheduling actually does with the help of visual elements as you can see there is a button called the criterion and the transitioning button uh, which does most of the work for us in order to understand the whole process so uh, i'll click on the criterion button and this button actually will assess the result that is the static data which we have generated right here the first one is the arrival time and the second one is called the burst time So I am clicking on the criterion button to assess the result of this statistical data. So I'll as soon as I click on the criterion button, I am choosing SJF as my implementation. Um, and I, as soon as I click, as you can see, the responding, the respective data which have been created out of this is in front of you. Uh, in order to check this data, let's say P1. Actually, has got waiting time to be zero because it got initially submitted at an arrival time of zero. So without any waiting, it got submitted. So this is correct, and the responding time on time is also correct. Now after that, it's the P3 which is being scheduled. So the waiting time of P2 should be more than its arrival time. Uh, sorry. The waiting time of P2 should be more than uh, its burst time. Actually, uh, more than the burst time for of P2 P3 actually P3. So P3 got submitted first. So uh, P2 has to wait for exactly this second plus the time lag between P2 and P3. So as you can see, uh, there is a burst time of three for P1. So There is a waiting time of around 0.4, uh, 0.38 seconds, which is being added right here, as well as uh, P3 is being executed for one second. So this will also add up to the waiting time of P2. 
So P2 actually got the slipping time to be 1.386, which is actually correct. Next in P3, as you can see, P3 got waited only for 0.376 or let's say 0.38 second because after P1, the, there is a direct uh, execution of P3 and so on. So we are getting the correct result for SGF scheduling. Uh, you can directly see the average waiting time and turn down time right here. But what we have done, we have done a slight change in implementing this in instead of uh, again making a comparison between the two criteria, what we have to do, you have to schedule this whole process once again. So what we did, we took this statistical data again and in order to compare the two algorithms, you just need to switch from FCF, SGF to FCFS. So for FCFS algorithm, our data will not be changed, but our criterion solution will get changed depending upon the particular criteria. So you can see uh, our statistical data, which is the arrival time and the bus time will remain the same, but depending upon FCFS, we are getting the turnaround time and the waiting time. So you can directly compare these two results. The average waiting time here is 1.184 while in SJF you can see it comes out to be 0.884 which is better than FCFS. This is one of the feature which has been implemented in the simulator uh, but the main purpose behind is to understand the functioning how the things are being implemented inside our machine. So in order to understand let's stop the simulation. So we have stopped the simulation and this is actually the timeline of the various process and nothing but some graphical elements as you can see here uh, these graphical elements has been provided uh, one of the cool features of vb dot net if you know how to do it so let's start with the transitioning stuff transitioning will tell you how the process is being running inside the machine so i'm clicking on the transitioning button as you can see there is a logical timer right here and the P1 has already been submitted to the CPU. You can see the blinking means the CPU is in running state and it is actually executing the P1. So it will execute exactly up to 3 seconds because the bus time of P1 is 3 seconds and SJF is 30 seconds first. There is a scheduler right here and as you can see as the timer goes on when we will hit the 2.61 mark as, we had, as it has done. So the two process got submitted inside the scheduler and depending upon the scheduling criteria, the P3 got executed first. And you can cross check with our timeline here what the order of scheduling will be. Now next will be the P2 which is going to be executed. Now exactly at 5.41 and 5.42 these process will come out of the ready queue and it is going to be selected by our scheduler. One of our process is going to be selected by scheduler and it will be given to the CPU. So as you can see, the process has come out, but after the completion of P2, the scheduler has started doing its work and the P5 is being selected by the scheduler. It is being submitted to the CPU with the help of dispatcher and the CPU is functioning. So after that, the, when the P5 has completed its scheduling, the P4 has been selected and the rest is being done by CPU. So this is actually the simulator uh, which does the function. Uh, I hope you like it. Thank you.